Chapter 6, The Art of Passion Before you and I make the quantum leap into motivation, communication, and implementation, which are the engines of the art of productivity, we have to take a brief detour to confirm you are on track with your personalized definition definition of success and your customized mission unless these elements fit you perfectly you cannot reach your destination the only thing that will make you succeed is to create more value by utilizing the art of productivity if you are going to go through the fa- the fire of achievement You've got to make sure you're on the exclusive road that will take you to your personalized destination. The only way to gouge your accuracy in this area is to examine your passion. I have had the privilege of meeting and working with some of the greatest people of the 20th and now the 21st century, either on stage, on television, in movies or in interviews for my columns and books. Each of these people has reached the pinnacle in the arena of business, sports, politics, social change, or the world of entertainment. These ultimate achievers come in many shapes and sizes and there is only one element that I have been able to discern that they all have in common without fail. Each of these superstars has an unwavering and burning passion toward the personal goals they pursue. My very first interview broadcast on the Narrative Television Network was with the legendary movie star Catherine Hepburn, we had several conversations after the interview and I was in communication with her up until several several months prior to her passing. Catherine Hepburn was a pioneer in the movie industry and received a claim that was unparalleled both from her audience and her peers. I will never forget the feeling as a novice interviewer of sitting down that first time to talk with Catherine Hepburn. She was intimidating to me to say the least, but totally down to earth and Anna summon her answer to one of my questions remains indelibly etched in my mind i ask miss hepburn if you had not found your way into show business as a movie actress what field do you feel you would be sorry would have pursued throughout your life she considered my question for a moment and then responded hesitantly i'm not exactly sure what I would have done but I hope I would have gone into medicine or some healing profession then with that unwavering degree of certainty that movie fans came to love she continued emphatically if I had not been able to make a living as an actress I would have had to have found another way to sustain myself as I acted to support my habit because I act out of an innate need to be an actress. This kind of passion will sustain you just as it did Catherine Hepburn throughout the trials and triumphs of pursuing your mission to reach your personal success. Everyone works hard and faces challenges and different difficulties those people who prevail are those who are pursuing their own passion 
I'm reminded of a story that I often have the opportunity to share from the arena stage at events around the world. Once upon a time, there were two ancient tribes of people who lived in close proximity to one another. One tribe lived in lush valley near a swiftly flowing river that sustained this valley tribe and their crops and livestock year round. The valley people lived an agrarian lifestyle of planning cultivating and harvesting throughout the seasons year after year. The second ancient tribe lived in the high up mountains just below the snow line where they dwelt in caves and sustained themselves throughout hunting for meat and foods. The mountain tribe prospered as they taught and so when generations of their young people the art of hunting and trapping. The two ancient tribes lived in different worlds. They rarely even sighted one another even though they lived less than a day's travel on foot from each other. As often happens when two societies of groups of people don't communicate, the two tribes began to fear one another and be suspicious of the other tribe. When human beings fail to communicate and understand one another, they always assume the worst to be true. Then one day, some misguided youth from the mountain tribe strayed beyond their normal hunting grounds, as teenagers will often do. Without thinking, they acted. These teenagers took a young baby that was sleeping on a palace near the river where its mother and other ladies of the valley tribe were washing clothes. Before they realized it, the teenagers from the mountain tribe were running along the path through the woods that led back to their mountain home, carrying the baby. When they saw they were being pursued from a distance by the women of the valley tribe, before they knew it, the teenager Sorry, teenage hunters from the mountain tribe had gone beyond the point of no return and they went back to their cave dwelling with the baby they had kidnapped. They hadn't unintentionally kidnapped just any baby. This was the infant son of the chief who of the fairy tribe. That very night, there was an emergency council meeting of the valley tribe around the bonfire. The chief employed their greatest warriors to climb up the mountain and bring back his baby. At daybreak, the best and strongest warriors of the valley tribe headed up the mountain in pursuit of their chief's son. They were brave and determined but were not accustomed to the mountain terrain and by sundown they returned dejectedly to the valley campsite and their forlorn chief. With the last rays of the setting sun, the chief and the people of the valley tribe spotted a lone figure coming down the mountain that their warriors had been unable to climb as the